I'm going to try to do an hour and a half of lecture into five minutes. So this is for the Venus Access Lab. So what is a central venous access device. It is a short-term IV insertion that is put in through large veins and will always end up at the superior vena cava. So what kind of patients are gonna get this therapy? It is gonna be patients um, that need TPN, um, chemotherapy, blood products, long-term antibiotics, um, or IV meds that just can't be put through smaller veins. Um, and for a central catheter, they're larger tubing. So for um, medications that are more viscous or thick, um, irritants or vesicants that might cause damage to smaller veins. So that's why we want to use these um, larger veins for certain therapies. So what are the types of venous access devices? So we have a PIC line, which is just a fancy name for a peripheral um, inserted central catheter. Um, it is usually in the anti-cubital region, and this ends up again at the superior vena cava. Um, it is not sutured when you're putting it in. Make sure you use a CHG, which is just an antimicrobial um, patch, or use um, an alcohol wipe for 5 to 15 seconds. And this is the only type of access device that a nurse can remove it, um, themselves because it's not surgically um, put in. So the next one is Portacath. That is a surgical implantation device. Um, with that, it's under the skin. You need a Hoover needle. Um, this is used with patients that have long-term chemo or transplant. Um, and it's most commonly put in the upper right chest, but it can be in other places too. So then finally, we didn't really talk about it much, but there's the tunnel and it's, um, there's one to three lumens. Usually I should have added two for lumens. Um, it is more common to see one to two, but they can have up to three and those are just those access. Um, so the tunnel, they're in the chest, they're insertion between dermis and where um, the calf enters the bloodstream. So going into valves, it's really pretty simple. Um, open is going to be with clamps, so you physically have to clamp it closed. Um, and then closed clamps have their own internal mechanism to shut, down, um, shut the IV. So that's the only difference. Um, so the types of lumens, there's a distal lumen. This is the one closest to the heart, and this is used for blood. So distal, closest to the heart for blood, medial, um, that's for meds and TPN. And finally, the proximal one is used for all of them. So it's meds, blood, and TPN. All right. And so what are the, I'm going to go into dialysis in a second. Um, two, so steps for the nurse to take with these patients. You want to assess the dressing to make sure it's clean, dry, and intact. If it's wet, soiled, or there's blood, you have to change it. Um, you want to access the ports um, with a CHD, as I said, or an alcohol wipe for 5 to 15 seconds. Um, you always want to use a 10cc syringe, so you're going to flush with that, um, of saline for patency. And you're going to usually dress the ch um, change the dressing every seven days. Or if you show or if there's signs of, you know, that it needs to be changed, you'll change it sooner. Um, and then dialysis, too. This is for renal failure patients. It's another um, type of access device. Um, again, so if dialysis is just where there's an external machine that takes out the blood and filters it back in. So... There's an AV fistula, which is a vein that connects surgically, um, uh, sorry, it connects a vein and artery surgically. So it takes the blood out of the artery and then returns that filtered blood back in through the vein. Um, and then you want to use a bell to listen for a bruit, as we saw on the arm. Um, so it'll make that whooshing sound. Just remember bruit and it makes that whooshing. And a DLC, not going into that much, but it's just more of a temporary um, mechanism for dialysis. Um, and so complications that you see with venous access devices is an air embolism. That's just air in the tubing. Um, you'll see patients having tachycardia, difficulty breathing, 
Um, and if you notice these, obviously you want to um, consult the provider. You're ha going to have an occlusion, a block in the line, phlebitis, which is that red streak. You're going to have that warmth um, and pain. So you want to stop the IV immediately. And then finally, infiltration, which is fluid into the tissues. So you're going to have that edema, that coolness, and that skin blanching. And just really quick TPN. Um, that's again, nutrients through an IV. Um, it's made up of micronutrients, which are just electrolytes, then macro, which are iron, amino acids, protein, and dextrose. And their TPN is used to decrease bowel motility and bowel obstruction. And you want to monitor for hyperglycemia because there's dextrose, um, in the formula and, Monitor all of this for CLABSI, which is central line associated blood infections. Um, yeah, blood some series, whatever. So yeah, that's it. Thanks. <laughs>